Hey yo, and welcome back to Chicago Reacts. My name is Lauren and I am going to be reacting after the cost of Concordia today. This was something that was requested in one of the comments on another video and I am now doing it. You are welcome. I don't remember who asked. I'm really sorry. If it was you, let me know um, and I will make sure that I actually get you a proper uh, acknowledgement uh, next time. So thank you again for uh, suggesting this video. I enjoy the internet historian videos very much and I like learning a little something. Um, it's more fun also to, now that I know that the internet historian, now that I've seen a couple of other uh, videos from his other channel that he's just a dude. So it's like, okay. I don't feel quite as inferior now, but <laughs> I like to learn the new things that the internet historian likes to tell me. So, and this one I actually have no idea about. So like several of the, um, the festival videos that I've watched from, from the internet historian, I've kind of known at least a little bit. This I've got nothing. I've got no clue. It looks like it's about a ship. That is all I have. So we shall see, uh, what is going on in just a moment. Just wanted to, again, shout out, uh, for everyone who comments, if you like, if you subscribe, you share these videos, it's incredibly helpful. Um, and I really appreciate it. I had a friend the other day just post it on his Facebook and like, that's nice. Just like, thank you. Thank you very much for helping me out. And uh, I'm now going to get going on this. We're gonna, I'm excited to see what the cost of Concordia was. I imagine it's not just talking about a price tag, so... Because the internet historian is rarely so uh, one one track. So let's go. Cost of Concordia. Ship of Dreams. It's been eight years. I can still smell the buffets from their five restaurants. The casino and three-story theater had hard. Is this? The one about the cruise ship where, like, everyone got sick. Probably been used. Ah, the gym, the day spa, the sheets in her 1500 luxurious cabins hadn't even been slept in. Costa Concordia cost $570 million to build. Oh, the Costa Concordia. Tell you could really tell. I like the Titanic music in the background. The cost of Concordia. Not just the cost of Concordia. I remember it like it was just a few years ago. No. We had left Civita Vecchia, a port in Rome, and we were making our way to Savona. It was day two of our seven day journey. But that ship. I. she was cursed. Oh my god. When she premiered, the traditional bottle of champagne bounced right off the side instead of smashing. That's really not funny. Bad, but I'm not the superstitious type. Nothing could go wrong on Friday the 13th of January 2012, on the 100th year anniversary of the Titanic, on a ship that's also only safety rated for two compartment flooding. Especially not when you have a five-star max-level captain like Francisco Scatino. A man I'm sorry, though, what? He rose from head of security to the position of captain within just a couple of years. He knows exactly what to do in case of an emergency. For example, when he caused this emergency in 2008, when he crashed into a port in Sicily. And in 2010, in Vanamon, Germany, when he was steering a different ship and came into port too fast and caused another collision. I've got a good feeling about this. So let's set this up. Great. It's a beautiful evening. People are having fun on the slides, drinks at the bar. Antonio Magnotta is playing piano at the restaurant. Martin the Magician is setting up for his show. And all right, so either everyone's going to get sick or because of all of the Titanic parallels that he's already brought up, it's going to sink. The ship is setting up for a little detour. It's called a sail by salute. Basically, you get real close to the shore and honk the horn. The locals hate it, but the customers love it, and it's a tradition. Scatino, the captain, comes into the dining hall with the lady, Dominica Samorton. Remember this face, because you'll be seeing a lot of it later. Scatino eats his dinner with her and socializes for a little while. 
Then he, Dominica, and the maitre d' finish up and excuse themselves. They're heading to the bridge. It's time for that sail-by salute. This time, they're going to get closer than ever. Just 1,500 feet from the island of Giglio. And Great. how are they going to determine this distance? Well, of course, the captain is going to eyeball it. Apparently, it's not an uncommon thing to do. Scatino turns to the fella steering, his helmsman, Jacob Rusleybin. First interesting tidbit. Costa Crochier has hired Jacob from Indonesia at a rock bottom price, and he's a bit of a newbie to the job. In fact, his profession hitherto, a painter and a cleaner. It's his first time steering a massive ship, and he's very excited. At least, Great. we think he is. It's hard to tell because he doesn't speak English or Italian very well at all. Off to a good start. The second in command orders the helmsman to 290. Now, don't be confused by these numbers, they're just the degrees on a compass. At the same time, the captain whips out his cell phone and calls former captain Mario Palombo, who lives on the island. They chat about the safe distance to Giglio's shores. It's all very casual. Anyway, Mario says that the safe distance is between 0.3 and 0.4 miles from shore. The captain is going all in. This is not his first sail by sea. Why? So he's confident in what he's doing. We're going closer than we've ever been before. The captain's eyeballing it again. Hmm. New heading of 300, he tells the helmsman. Downstairs, Martin is about to cut his assistant in half. And of course, that means that there's already a lady inside this box. She's waiting for the cue, and then she'll poke her legs out. The captain is giving more orders. Pulling gently to 310. Increase speed to 16 knots. Uh oh. This fast is going to be a fatal error. But I knew it wasn't going to go good. Ugh. I was about to say, I bet, I bet someone's about to die, and like. <sighs> then he said fatal error. Before we talk about that, let's talk about another big problem language barrier. Because at this point, the captain says 325, but the helmsman relays 315. So the first officer intervenes and he goes, no, 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 335, which is also wrong. And then the captain clarifies, no, 325. The helmsman confirms 325. Their poor communication has them moving at a much wider angle than they think they are. However, the captain should and would know this, except for the next problem, complacency about procedure. The standard procedure of a ship this large is for the third officer to give exact positional coordinates every time the captain gives a new directional order. But they're not doing that. 3.30, he says. The helmsman relays 3.30. The ship reaches 16 knots. The captain then turns to the second officer and instructs him to go to the left wing. That's these things here, and they basically exist so you can get a better view over the whole vessel. A few seconds pass. And then, the mood starts to turn. Scatino notices white foam of waves breaking against the rocks directly in front of him in the distance. The Costa Concordia, right now, is almost 700 meters closer to the rocks than it should be. Mm. Without deviation, there is going to be a direct collision. Oh, shit! Scatino immediately commands the ship to start turning away. 335! Not enough. The captain shouts, 340. The captain yells, 350. Now, remember how I said that accelerating to 16 knots was a fatal error? Well, that's because it's made this ship incapable of such a drastic turn. Oh God. What they've got is understeer. Here's an example. The front end is not working. You're turning, 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 and you're just going straight. You want to go over here, but you're going to end up over here. So despite the order of 350, Right now, the bow is still only pointing at 327. Not nearly enough to miss the rock. And oh no, it's about to get worse. That language barrier again. In these critical moments where every second counts, the helmsman wrongly relays 340. The captain snaps back, 350, starboard, or we end up on the rocks. The third officer goes to assist the helmsman. Now, don't get confused by the orders from here. We're changing over to rudder instructions. The captain yells, starboard 10, starboard 20, and still it's not enough. Hard to starboard. That means as hard as it'll go. But at this point, even if they clear these rocks, they need to get the rest of the ship to swing around it. 
So the captain yells, midship, oh, which God. centers the rudder. The bow is now less than 150 meters from Skull Rock. Port Great! Oh no, I'm sorry, uh-uh. No, 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 no. Skull Rock. It's called Skull Rock. Of course it's called Skull Rock. Why wouldn't it be called Skull Rock? Of course it is, because why not? Before another order is given two seconds later. Port 20! They might just avoid disaster here, maybe. But then, oh no. One more time, the helmsman cocks up at the worst possible moment. The helmsman goes to starboard instead of port, undoing the swing. Eight seconds later, he realizes the error and corrects, but it's too late. He has just turned a probable near miss into a sure hit. All they can do now is hold on as the bow of the ship narrowly passes by the rocks. Hard to port. The second officer yells, we're gonna hit. Collision. I like all these Sims 4 characters. Downtown Nordtown. All right, gave me a little bit of a, a start there when it came to the uh, advertisement. Seems I never win. Gonna drink all by yourself? Somebody has to. I hear you're a man who's good at finding folks. I'm many things. I'm looking for this fella. I got to find him. It's breaking my little heart. I'll see what I can do. I have contacts in thousands of servers in dozens of countries across the globe. And just like that, she was gone. The only thing she left was a calling card. Hmm. My VPN doesn't seem Sometimes to work so great. <laughs> It doesn't let, it doesn't that. understand that when I say I'm in a different Your country, VPN I'm in a different can protect country. protect my online data. But who can protect me from myself? When they said this job gets easier, it was just another lie. Forensics found his password spread all the way down the block. In a perfect world, we'd all use NordVPN. But I guess this isn't that kind of story. I took the brakes off my car. Man like me never really learned how to stop. Shut the fuck up. I took the steering wheel out too. I let the road take me where I'm supposed to be. That's right, Toots. Your husband's dead. Oh my god. Merry Christmas. Go to nordvpn.com slash internet. Oh, the noir. For a huge noir for Nord. Two year plan. Very good. Add uh. The ship hits rocks on the port side. A 53 meter gash opens up in the hull, and thousands of tons of water begin pouring in. A loud oh, scraping shice. and bang is heard by all passengers. At the helm, there's panic. Rumblings in the dining room. Martin awkwardly pauses his act as he's helping his assistant into the box. Meanwhile, the lady inside let me out, let is trapped me out, me out. and terrified. There's confusion across the ship. All of the crew off shift come back on duty. All officers run to the bridge. Technical crews run down to the lower decks to assess damage. On connection with the rocks, they lose propulsion and slow to 8.3 knots. And they are now adrift. Close Great. the watertight doors at stern. Enormous volumes of water are pouring in. So much so that within 29 seconds of collision, all six engines stop working through flooding. 22 seconds later, a blackout happens. Lights, electrics, the water pumps too. Everything. The captain orders the helmsman hard starboard. This is the final position of the rudder before power to that too is lost. The Costa Concordia, now without power, is drifting starboard. Plunged into absolute darkness. Oh God. A quick breakdown of the flooding. 
When the Concordia struck land, it tore open three watertight compartments. At first, compartment five, which filled very rapidly. Then six more slowly, four shortly after. Then seven, eight, and three. Modern ships are built to withstand two compartment breaches. These compartments especially though are a problem because they contain the engines and the electrics. These main generators give power to the whole ship. From propulsion motors to rudder to hotel functions, pretty much everything. When they went out, the ship was a functionless sinking cage. A few seconds later, the emergency batteries for internal lighting and communications kick on. Something. When the lights come back on, Martin has vanished. He's ditched the stage. And it caused a huge panic in the theater as passengers are trying to flee to their cab. Wait, what did he say? He's ditched the he stage. He flipped open the latches. Even Okay, so at least she got out. Okay. He's not a total... Why did he do that? Why did he run away? And it caused a huge panic in the theater. I like the America's Got to Talent to audience. Cabins ...and to muster stations. People already in their cabins come out and start putting on life vests. Staff rally and try to calm everyone down. Everything is fine. No, no! no need for vests. Put on your vest! You turn to your cabins. The emergency generator starts. <laughs> All of the watertight doors close except for door 12. Oh, great. Which is jammed. No, no, go the back. He, he always, like, leaves these things... Generator starts. Close. All of the water... Okay, water can... Okay, yeah. The tight doors close, except for door 12, which is jammed. The captain calls Pilot, the chief engineer, as the ship begins to list on the port side. There's water coming in? Yes, there's water. But where? The engine room. But a lot of water? Yes! Yeah! There's water, you can't go down. Let's go down the other side. In a moment, we'll start the pumps, I'll let you know. In the theater, the whole magic box apparatus slides right off the stage and falls into the crowd, further increasing panic. On the bridge, an announcement is being prepared. They are going to lie to prevent a panic. Let's just say we have a blackout. Great. The deputy chief engineer enters the engine control room. He confirms to the bridge that at least compartments 5, 6, and 7 are flooded. Jeez. Announcements are made. Well, the captain to inform you that due to an electrical fault, which is currently under control, we're currently in a blackout. Our technicians are working to resolve the situation and will inform you of developments as they occur. Thank you for your attention. Coincidentally, at the same time in the restaurant, they're playing My Heart Will Go On, and it's very much not helping the situation. Are they really? The captain calls the Costa Crisis Unit. Roberto? Uh, I feel like that is just a bad thing to play on a cruise ship no matter what. Like, why? Why would you do? Like, that's just a terrible idea. I would be so nervous to, like, hear My Heart Will Go On if I was on a ship at any, at any point. I don't remember what the uh, what the other musicians were playing, so that none of those songs would bug me. But I would not, I would not want to hear. My heart will go on. Ferrarini. He tells the crisis unit that they've hit a rock, that they're assessing damages, and that they are also in a blackout. The crisis office says to reverse the ship up onto shore. How? How are you going to do that? You don't have power to the rudder, let alone the engine. You know, hoist the sails. Anyway, around this time, the wind yeah, direction creates a starboard list, and the ship begins to turn anyway, drifting right back towards the shore, which oh. is a very good thing because you want the ship to end up as close to shore as possible. A panicked okay. passenger senses that something is off. This isn't like any electrical problem that she's ever seen. Plus, there was a massive crashing noise, and now the ship is tilting. So, she contacts her daughter in Italy. Me her daughter. daughter. Then calls the police, and the police call the harbour master. While that goes on, a conversation between Pilon and Ambrosio. The diesel is not starting. See, that sounds like that could be a good thing, like a really, really good thing. If she, like the that one passenger that she called the police who called the harbor master, like, and now the harbor master knows, that sounds like it could save lives. The captain asks the engine room, but where have we made contact? Thinking that the incoming water can be reduced. Captain, here everything is lost. The electrical panel, everything. They're saying at this point, that the ship is going down. The captain calls Roberto Ferrarini again. Uh, actually, two compartments have been flooded, but don't worry, the ship's stability isn't in danger. It's three. Oh, God. Passengers begin going to muster stations on their own initiative. 
the cruise director says, We have a lot of people at muster stations that I do not want to fall overboard. Do we make an announcement to tell them to go to the lounges? Bozio says, I think that's best. The harbour master from Livorno calls the ship. The captain tells them that we, we just have a blackout. How long has this blackout been going on? Uh, about 20 minutes. Have you asked passengers to put on life vests? It, it's just a blackout. I, I gotta go. The harbour master is suspicious. Yeah, he good. to his superiors that he thinks something more is going on. He calls a patrol boat to the area and asks them to look at the ship. Another problem. The fan on the emergency diesel generator isn't working properly. Pilon manually has to turn the thing on and off with a screwdriver so that it doesn't overheat and cause a fire. The captain is on the phone to the lower decks asking pointless questions like, is it still flooded? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes it is. The captain is essentially in denial of the situation. The harbour master calls again. Finally, he says, the ship is taking on water through an opening in the left side and the ship is listing. He qualifies with, no one dead or injured. The harbour master asks if he needs help. Just a tugboat? When in reality, they need a full rescue. A tugboat? The, apartment's flood. the captain finally realises that things are really bad and they are not going to improve. The Coast Guard orders every available ship to the sea. Good! Meanwhile, up with the passengers, the cruise director's assistant says, uh, everything's under control. Please return to your cabins or hang about in the lounges, no problem. She said this despite knowing it was wrong and that it further endangered lives. Most passengers at this point, though, aren't listening to Good. this nonsense and they're busy figuring out how to abandon ship. Good. Bing, 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 bong. Local television has already picked up. I like it when people are not total morons. Like, yikes. Like, I also hate it when people in power lie, like people who are in control and they should not be lying when people's lives are in stake. Thank God that these people are not total idiots. The story and they begin broadcasting live radio feed from the bridge. Hey, couple. Captain, the passengers are going on board the boats. Okay, let them go to shore. Yes. Within general emergency? Wait, nah. let me talk to Ferrarini. We risk the emergency generators that do not have cooling. It has cooling problems, 100 degrees. The cooling fan has stopped. Pilon calls the bridge and tells the safety officer they need to evacuate. The safety officer relays this to the captain, but after no response, he orders the engine room to evacuate on his own. Good. The captain says, no, stay. We're leaving. So what do we do? General emergency? <laughs> The captain tells Ferrarini that he's abandoning ship. Abandoned ship! Another announcement is made. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. The situation is under control. Please remain calm. But at this time, proceed to your master station. They're located outside on deck four. The Livorno Coast Guard calls again. The captain declares distress. The Coast Guard officially calls for rescue operations. They contact Pietro Mille, the helicopter base commander, who then calls in every available pilot as he rushes down to the helicopter base. Pilon shuts down the emergency generator for the final time. The first rescue vessel arrives. By this point, the lifeboats are already going. Luckily, the ship is very close to shore. Oh, perhaps too close to shore. The ship forcefully runs aground, creating an uneven center of gravity and it begins heavily listing starboard. The captain issues a general emergency on board. Finally. The to abandon ship is finally called and alarms ring out. And with that comes panic. And now that they're listing, with many of the lifeboats too awkwardly positioned to enter the water, there aren't enough readily available and they have to start going back and forth to the shore, picking people up and dropping them off. The patrol boats report to the Livorno Harbour Master that the ship has run aground and is listing heavily. So the harbour master asks the captain about it, and the captain says, no, 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 the ship is still floating. Stop! In fact, we're trying to manoeuvre it onto the shore. If this guy doesn't go to freaking jail, I'm gonna be very upset. Just very upset. More like gross negligence. And if he's not sued by literally everybody, everyone needs to sue him and he needs to go to jail. Like, if, if he was trying his best to actually rectify the situation, that would be one thing, but he's super not. They know he's lying. Good. I'm reversing it. Beep, 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 beep. The captain then says to bottom out the starboard anchor. So they drop out the anchors. Seriously, this guy is driving me to drink. I know that I often drink on this show, but like, more. But let out too much chain, effectively rendering them useless. Great. 
Awesome. The premier of Giglio, Mario Pellegrini, and tobacco shop owner Giovanni Rossi arrive at the harbor. They watch. That's a weird duo. Did he say the mayor and the tobacco the shop owner? Takes the initiative, rendering them useless. The deputy mayor of Giglio, Mario Pellegrini, and tobacco shop owner Giovanni Rossi arrive at the harbor. Weird they watch the scene unfold. Duo. As the first of the lifeboats arrive on shore, the deputy mayor takes the initiative and races to board one of the lifeboats, returning to the ship, and starts trying to find someone in charge. He gives up and starts helping passengers. Yeah, okay. Scatino tells him. everyone to leave and take radios, but not before changing out of his uniform and into a nice suit. Priorities. Dimitri Christidis and Sylvia Car He is trying to avoid even- Oh my god. <sighs> he infuriates me. Veronica, leave with him. The maitre d' and Samor can both get out of there. By this point, approximately 300 people are still on the ship. Melee reaches the helicopter base. The first helicopter, a slow-moving Augusta Bell, was already rising from the tarmac for the hour-long flight south. Bozio is the last crew member left on the bridge, coordinating evacuation. You met the captain's supposed to, to do. passengers board lifeboats. The bridge is now abandoned. And then, the ship's black box stops working. Apparently there were technical problems with it. <laughs> means, from here, things are going to get a little foggy in detail. A while later, rescue helicopters arrive, but they're struggling to find the ship because they're expecting it to still be well above water. Passengers are scaling down the port side by ladder as lifeboats return to pick them up. This is no, no joke. Oh my goodness. It was no, no joke anymore. Yes. You're not allowed to make a film I'm movie. I'm allowed, I'm allowed. Who say you are? A second helicopter, a faster model, sets off. The ship stops healing and comes to a final resting place. Now the Coast Guard calls the captain because he's just learnt that the captain has abandoned ship. The captain claims, uh, uh, no, actually I slipped and I fell into one of the lifeboats. Ooh, I'm a klutz. But now that I'm on board, I... This motherfucker. I know this was like, wait, this was 10 years ago now. I want to punch him in his face. I, I may as well head back to shore. DeFalco tells the captain to get the fuck back on board. And the captain kind of acts confused and then effectively refuses. So the captain makes it to shore. From here, we only have mainstream news reports to rely on, so it's not going to be super accurate. But they say that Giglio's police chief then finds 110 survivors on the rocks at Point Gabianara. And among them is the captain. It's not known whether the captain helped anyone while he was there. And in fact, no, the police I don't chief think he claimed did. that he just sat on the rocks and watched other people do the rescue. That sounds right. Based on what we know about this later, asshole. A rescue boat picks up the captain and takes him to the harbor. He speaks to the police. He then finds the ship's onboard chaplain, Father Rafael Molina, and cries to him for about 15 minutes. <laughs> then he goes to the harbor master's office to receive probably the biggest dressing down of his entire life. Port authorities ask the taxi driver to take the captain back to his hotel. Ugh. The captain no. takes the 30 second cab ride to the Bahamas Hotel. According to the cabbie, he was beaten like a dog. He was cold and afraid. Good. He only asked me where he could buy a pair of fresh socks. <laughs> but then he perked right up again and gave an interview to a news crew. He told them that he was the last to leave. The captain is usually the last to abandon ship. What happened, Captain? We were the last to leave the ship. All day Saturday, rescuers search for people on the ship. 
On Sunday morning, a South Korean couple is found in their cabin, safe but shivering. Good, they had okay. slept through the crash and woke up unable to exit their cabin. The last survivor, Manrico Giampandroni, was found with a broken leg. He was the cabin's service director. In the end, 32 people died. Oh my god. The final body wasn't discovered until nearly three years later. A crew member, Russell Rebello, and it's believed that he died a hero. Help! Oh, so for three years he was just missing. God. Having passengers off the ship, the Costa Concordia was the largest cruise ship disaster since the Titanic. And then there's the ship. This is what happens to a 110,000 ton cruise liner when it's left half rolled over in the ocean. But this isn't the end, it's just the halfway point. What most people know is that the Costa Concordia had crashed, many dead, and that the captain abandoned ship like a coward. But there's a whole veritable spaghetti of details to untangle. That doesn't even look that Let's good. Oh, why? Ugh, no, that's horrible. Why would you do that? Also, that is gross looking sauce and it looks like it just came right out of a can and like, ugh, I mean, it doesn't even stick on the noodles at all. And also there's no, oh, there's, ugh, that's just nasty. Okay, now I'm judging the sauce. <laughs> Ew! It doesn't even look good. It's not thick enough. Blue box time. The Costa Concordia was more than just a floating resort. There's a mall. A casino. Cha-ching, cha-ching. This iron chest was full of safes and cash registers and expensive fittings. And there were plenty of gamers prepared to sneak by authorities and try their luck in the hot zone. Within days, police divers reported that valuable items, once seen lying around the ship, were now missing. High-end liquor, expensive furniture, dining sets, cash from the casino, cash registers, jewelry and display cabinets, safes, Japanese woodblock prints by famous 18th century artists, as well as the iconic bell, which hung from the bridge of the ship. It was never found. <laughs> Who steals a big fuck off bell? <laughs> Even I mean, the server admins were getting involved. Why not, right? Four divers who were part of the company contracted to refloat the Concordia were spotted on CCTV, sneaking out to the ship. A patrol boat was dispatched, and the men were caught inside the fancy suites with rucksacks full of stolen goods. The four men are charged with stealing. And yet the captain has not been charged with gross negligence and endangerment. Oh my god. And thieving. And pinching. Later on, stolen as well as legitimate items found their way to Amazon and eBay. Chips from the casino, postcards, and cabin access cards became highly sought after souvenirs. It even has a watermark. Hey, Some Patrick Australian Friedman. guy even made a listing for the ship itself, advertising it as buyer to collect. And although there were plenty of bidders, eBay pulled the plug. I know you want to see Scatino go to jail and yes. we'll get to that, but first, oh, good. we have to talk about someone else. Domnica Samorton. That was a close one. There was speculation that she was on the bridge that evening because she was the captain's mistress. Oh, I don't care. Intense media speculation reports that her presence distracted the captain. They both denied their love for years and maintained that they were just friends. Although, she did later admit to the media that she found him handsome. And how could you not? You so fucking precious when you smile. 
but she says there was no romantic link between them. Some people would like to believe, they want to know I have something with him, it's more interesting, it's like, you know, some spicy, spicy. in the story. Mr. Morton also loved the spotlight, however. Oh, everyone! Oh, look! And took several interviews. But as the pressure mounted upon her, she began making ominous threats to Scatino, saying he must confess, and that you have but one week to come clean. But things from here get weird. Spicy. Sir Morton is a bit of a wild card. <laughs> In a subsequent interview, she claimed a helicopter came to the ship well before the other rescue craft to take away a package. Huh? And what was that package? Drugs, apparently. So rumors began that the ship was running narcotics for the Mafia. And not without cause, a number of cruise ships, even recently, have been caught trafficking drugs. As an aside, Scudino was tested for drugs immediately after the crash. He tested negative for drugs in his system, but trace amounts of cocaine were found in a hair sample. Makes it smoother and less dry. Nonetheless, the Concordia was served. I mean, but that could have been from, you know, days previously. Because sometimes, like, if you don't, like char right away right i think i think cocaine can stick around for a little like if you don't right i honestly don't know <laughs> uh but i feel like that could have been from a couple days before like especially if he didn't wash his hair in that like three days like a day or two in advance he didn't wash his hair you know he could have just been in there from like he been partying on shore still illegal I'm not like saying do cocaine but what like like, but I'm just saying, like, it doesn't have to have, it doesn't have to be from the ship. It could have been, because it was day one, right? It was like this, the first night of the, of the trip, right? So it could have been from either earlier in that day, um, or it could have been from the day before. You know, it could have, there seems to be a lot of random speculation that is now happening. There, like, there seems to be, like, no real evidence that she was sleeping with him or that like her presence there was distracting him uh or that there was like now now the mafia is involved i'm like ah, i don't know about all that and no drugs were reportedly ever found how did we get here oh right a helicopter sir morton commented on it again the next day and said actually that helicopter but they didn't evacuate via helicopter. The cast and I was first. Imagine if Salino flew in a helicopter before any of the rescue crews arrived. Does she expect some sort of first class? I think this confusion is caused by low IQ. <laughs> a glamorous lover of Costa Concordia, Captain claims he tried to flee the stinking ship by helicopter. They're just doing a lot of assumptions. It was just for the captain as a means of evacuation from the ship. Okay, wait. So she expected to get some sort of first-class rescue while everyone else was still stuck on the ship? Wait, how did we get here? Oh, right. Sex with the captain. Divers were quick to head to the captain's cabin where they found Miss Morton's lingerie oh. and other articles of clothing as well as a makeup bag. Well, that's the jig was some up. kind of proof but anyway. they continued denying it. Sir Morton mostly faded from international attention until she was told to appear before the court to present witness testimony. See, that was at least, that's at least some kind of evidence. Again, it's still circumstantial. Like, you can't prove anything with that, really, but that does make it a lot more likely that they were probably boning. But it's still technically circumstantial until we get actual proof. The judge pressed her to be truthful about their relationship, or she would be held in contempt. Either tell me the truth or shut up. So finally, she admitted it. Oh, good. Yes, I had a sentimental relationship. Sentimental? It's different still. But now, stop asking about my private life. She was indeed the captain's lover. And again, so what? Like, uh, I don't, I still don't see how that is relevant to all of the bullshit fuck ups that the captain did. That had nothing to do with her. She was sleeping with him, sure. Like, and again, like I said, I'm just wait. I was just waiting for actual proof because it seemed like there was a lot of speculation happening. And, you know, sure, maybe it was even like a good leap in, uh, you know, a good leap to make. But it's still just, you can't. 
all, it's just sensationalism to publish that before you know the truth. And now she's admitted it. But at the same time, I'm still like, how is that relevant? I don't think there's been any proof so far that his mess ups were because of her. It sounds like the first couple of mess ups were because of the language barrier between him and the helmsman. Like, it, that's not her fault. She shouldn't have been on the bridge. But like, it doesn't sound like she did anything there that was actually harmful. What is up, Troubler Nation? What's it he know? She did on this wife with C or Tan. I don't oh care. God. She and Scatino had been having an affair for several weeks. She also said that on the night she boarded, she didn't have a ticket. Ticket, please. And didn't need to pay because nobody questions you when you're the captain's lover. All right, I mean. Naturally, she gave another confusing interview after leaving court. I want to say that today is the second time I die because the first time I die in the night of the crush with my psychological brain and uh, problems. And today I die the second time because, of course, people <laughs> find out something that I try to hide. Subsequent to the trial, she used her fame in Moldova to become a political activist, often appearing on television and radio and in articles covering protests, accompanied by pictures of her being arrested by police. She's complaining that there aren't enough bins in the area. The police are telling her to calm down and point out that the bins are right there. The crowd is standing around telling the police that she's allowed to protest and generally white knighting. It was some stuff about victims of violence, women's rights, Girl power. yada yada yada, and interestingly, part of a push to block the sale of shares of Moldova's train network to Russia. Sure, sure. Hmm. Other than that, I don't really know what she's been up to. Let me just check on her uh, ins. Oh God, not again. Again, don't see how her relationship with the captain is relevant. Lost. <laughs> Several civil suits were quickly lodged against Costa Crociere, and their parent company, Carnival Cruises, immediately saw a share drop of twenty-three percent. Don't beat. Passengers sought compensation for their damaged mental health, lost Good. belongings, okay. and yeah, yeah. loved ones. Mm -hmm. Either they allowed him to divert from his course, or they didn't know where their billion dollar ship was. Within a few days, facing financial and media pressure, the CEO attempted to join the bandwagon against the captain and the crew. That was not the ordinary route that the ship was taking at the time and, and was not only taking by the time the, the ship Today, was junior? claiming that the ship was not approved to deviate from the route but that wasn't true approval isn't required if the ship is deviating by less than 15 miles or that it was against company rules also untrue because investigators found that they didn't have any rules about deviating route and they tacitly encouraged sail by salutes. Now, in response to the civil suits, Costa Crociere offered passengers 11,000 euros each as compensation. That's kind of small. 11,000 euros, about $14,000, is the minimum compensation under international hmm. law when a ship is abandoned. Great. This was to reimburse them for their tickets, as well as any costs they accrued in having to unexpectedly travel home. Uh, yeah, what about therapy, hmm? What about all the therapy that you're now gonna need? home early and that was supposed to release them from everything and anything that has to do with this accident i cannot ask for more than this a lot of passengers understandably were not too happy with this deal and they refused to take the money yeah the offer is an insult it is what these poor passengers went through we think that the compensation being offered is not commensurate it's not here take it Compensation being offered is not commensurate. <laughs> I don't know what that's from, but I like it. Plea deal with the Tuscany court to pay a one million euro fine to avoid a criminal trial. The judge agrees. Costa Crociere is now off the hook for all criminal liability for the whole thing. They've washed their hands of the incident and flecked the residual droplets of responsibility onto the faces of six staff members. Passengers and relatives of the dead are livid that the company has been able to avoid criminal responsibility. Offered is not commensurate. Civil suits against the company continue. By Good. the way, 
The residents of the island of Giglio also banded together. And the port was blocked to fishing boats while recovery was being done, importing goods a lot more difficult too. They had an influx of tourists, but they were all there to see the Concordia. In the end, they didn't get much in terms of compensation. Sort damages. They didn't get much. Eventually, passengers who refused the initial compensation of 11,000 joined civil parties against Scatino in his trial in 2015. It's not they were awarded 30,000 euros each. See? Cases, Better. Those involving lost relatives are settled for undisclosed amounts. Really New funny. attorney Peter René traveled Ugh. to Budapest to represent six real survivors of the disaster. At René and René, we personally work on every case. And we'll work harder than anyone to get you the most money possible in the shortest amount of time. And while on the job, a seventh case cropped up via mail. email. An elderly woman, a loner, said, Help me, Mr. René, for I have lost my daughter, Eva, and my five-year-old granddaughter, Roxana. So Mr. René agreed to speak with her. However, there were some inconsistencies in her story. Neither Eva nor Roxana were on the passenger list. Odd, but Costa is known for having stowaways. Gotcha, bitch. Still, Mr. Renai was suspicious. They wouldn't cheaty old Petey, would they? <laughs> Renai inquired further about why she was on board, especially without a ticket. Ilona said, Well, I don't know, but you should ask her boyfriend. Zolt Horvath. He'll know all the details. I'm up all night. I'm going crazy, he said. But Mr. Renai was still suspicious. Because then she asked, how much money do you think this is worth? Uh... This is a huge red flag, Petey. In 20 years of doing this, you've never had anyone ask about money. Why now? So Mr. Renai hired an investigator and sent photos around of the missing girl. The next day, the phone rang. Oh, hoi hoi. It was the boyfriend again. Ah, uh, look, there's been a bit of a misunderstanding and the child isn't missing at all. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then he claimed he was confused because he had done too many drugs the night before. Oh. Okay, can I speak to the daughter then? Which drugs? At first, he was refused. So Renai said that he'd have to file a missing persons report to the police if he couldn't. The boyfriend relented. That night, Renai met with Zolt and brought the police with him. He speaks to the granddaughter and asks her if she's seen mum. Yeah, I saw her today. Oh, really? Yeah, we went to the park today and we went on the swings. Oh no, the jig was up. So the mum walks into the room sheepishly. It's a miracle. And the story changed again. Okay, I'm not dead, but I did injure me leg when I jumped from the ship. And then I immediately flew back to Budapest. Although don't worry about checking my leg because there are no visible marks or injuries. Uh, old Petey, I'm beginning to think they weren't even on the boat. Also, it turns out this lady isn't her mum, it's just a neighbour. Eventually, Renee managed to make the pair confess. And then they said, hey, we haven't done anything wrong. We haven't taken any money. And in the end, it looks like there'll be no criminal punishment for the scam. Because Hungary, a former communist country, has no laws against insurance fraud on the books. <laughs> Okay. All right. Please no sue. <laughs> the law firm that never sleeps. Call one eight hundred six six four seven. Oh, that's a bad idea. Oh, that's a very bad idea. <laughs>
Latino to Vado a Bordo Cazzo became a bit of a national hero overnight. Vado a Bordo Cazzo. Like the rest of the world expected Scatino to go down with the ship. We're going to make sure that I'm talking over this a little bit because I'm pretty sure I can get copyright claimed. Out. DeFelco was there to admonish him. And when he stopped answering the radio, he called him on his cell phone to continue putting him on blast. I hear you call me on my cell phone. When the captain first reported... Sorry, I was making a joke and I didn't hear what he actually said, so I'm going to have to go back and leave that again. And I will not make... I won't do, I won't do the joke again. And when the captain chickened out, DeFelco was there to admonish him. And when he stopped answering the radio, he called him on his cell phone to continue putting him on blast. But I really will hurt you. I will cause you a boatload of trouble. <laughs> he actually said... Oh, that's funny. When the captain first reported... I love him. ...just a blackout, DeFelco didn't believe the story. He doesn't look like he's ever believed anything ever. ...rescue effort, which likely saved several lives. His actions were applauded by most Italians who were tired of their public servants being corrupt and avoiding responsibility. Accordingly, shirts sporting a Vado a board for Cazzo were being printed by the end of the week, others setting it as their phone's ringtone. But then, in September 2014, without warning, De Falco was transferred to an admin role in the Coast Guard. Hear what I said, he'd been demoted. De Falco said that he had been passed up for promotion, that he had also not been told which admin office he was even being transferred to, oh. and that it all effectively cancelled 10 years of his career. DeFelco was tres furioso, and there was public speculation that it was owing to bad blood between himself and Admiral Delano, his former boss. His status among the public overshadowed his superior. Delano was promoted and reported. On the other hand, his boss said, ah, no, it's part Every year I sign 500 transfers of officers, the very normal movements changing for us is an enrichment. If he wants to remain operative, he will be able to do it when he has a degree. Now we cannot, we don't promote. Mm. What do you promote for then? Part of a normal career progression for naval officers and that he must show more maturity and professionalism to advance his career. Now, it's hard to know what's true in office politics, so let's leave that alone. And anyway, in 2018, DeFelco said buenas noches, ya later, to the Italian Navy to become a politician. Okay, so now he's just doing Spanish, but it's supposed to be Italian. Like, come on. At least you say the Italian part. Don't. Buenos noches is not Italian. In March that year, he was elected to the Italian Senate, serving as a member for Livorno. He still serves there today. I'm the company now. It's like Buona Notte, I think. Please, please. The day after the disaster, Scatino was taken into custody by police and underwent questioning. However, it was clear that this would not be a straightforward investigation. So the judge released him under house arrest at his home in Sorrento, a town in Napoli. By July of that year, the house arrest was relaxed and he was allowed within this general area. While under house arrest, he wrote a book. Oh, great. With this journalist from Rai magazine. I have she no looks idea what it stunned. Says, I don't speak Italian. La verità sommerse. So the truth. I don't know what sommerse means, but la verità is but the truth. He must have some kind of charisma going on, because there's been a lot of speculation in the press that he had an affair with her as well. He can't keep getting away with it! Hold on, I got it, I got it. No, he can't. Not content with abandoning his ship, this dude is determined to abandon his wife as well. So, Scatino and five others are facing criminal charges. Straight away, everyone lodges a plea bargain with the court. And all of those plea bargains are accepted, except for Scatino. Good. And the condition of everyone's reduced sentences are that they must provide witness testimony against Scatino. He touched me. Ciro, Jacob, and Sylvia were all given suspended sentences. Roberto and Manrico are able to opt for community service or house arrest. Not a bad deal. A good deal. I do feel bad for the helmsman. Like, I mean, he was not qualified to be there, but his mistakes seemed to be genuine and like pure, like actually just mistakes. And he wasn't like, you know, he wasn't lying to anybody. He just didn't understand 
as things occasionally. And it's like, yeah, I know he shouldn't have been in that role, but it wasn't his fault he was hired. And it wasn't his fault that he, like, wasn't qualified. Like, that's the fault of the people who hired him. Like, I, I don't know if I... That's not entirely fair, I don't think. Good deal. And that meant that Scatino was now all on his own. But that's okay. The first officer was the first to give his testimony. On the witness stand, he claimed that Scatino was distracted by his mistress and other guests on the bridge. Oh my God. That there was confusion over who was in command. Then it was Jacob's turn. And he said, Lamau XD, because he didn't actually bother with his testimony or his reduced sentence. He just fled the country. Oh. It took authorities 12 months to eventually track him down on the outskirts of Jakarta. Whoa, 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 whoa. It also said something about manslaughter, what? That there was confusion over who was... Okay, this also says it did not immediately... He did not speak the phrase, I'm taking control, which signals a change in command. However, given the way he positioned himself, I assumed he had taken command and I thought I was no longer in charge. Then... As since the captain was distracted, we're getting closer to uh, Giglio. Giglio? Giglio. I gave the orders to the helmsman. Uh, VDR suggests that's not true, though, so. ...was in command. Then it was Jacob's turn. And he said, Lamau XD, because he didn't actually bother with his testimony or his reduced sentence. He just fled the country. It took authorities 12 months to... Uh, Rusli bin has not been heard of since being sentenced to 20 months from- Oh, okay. So he was- that's- that's the manslaughter. ...eventually track him down on the outskirts of Jakarta. And when they said, Oi, we still want that witness testimony. He just scalped again. And he hasn't been found since. Okay. After that, Ferrarini gave his testimony, then Sil- uh, look, we don't have time to relitigate the whole trial. So let's just go straight to the verdict. Guilty! Scatino was found guilty of multiple manslaughter, causing a shipwreck, abandoning ship, and lying to authorities. He is sentenced to 16 years and one month. Hey, There is some Wait, justice. There's still the appeal. No! The appeals trial begins. And the verdict on the appeal? Surprise! Rejected! <laughs> so Scatino's lawyer appealed again. And the verdict on the final appeal? Scatino made multiple attempts to secure a plea deal, but was denied by the prosecution each time. The prosecution called for Scatino to be sentenced to 26 years in prison. <laughs> a Titanic affair. Oh, okay, I see what you did there. Scatino was not present. His lawyer stated that he was waiting outside of the jail for the ruling, so that if his plea was rejected, he could immediately start serving his sentence. And with that, five Good. years and four months after the disaster, he was finally in a cell. Good. I'm very glad about that. That makes me very happy. The salvage operation was enormous. It took over two years and cost an estimated 1.2 I think this is the video that's gotten me the angriest. I don't know that I have, like, been angry about something before in this. So, like, the fact... Like, this guy made me so freaking mad. Like, I don't know that I've ever... I don't think I've gotten mad before. <laughs> he pissed me off so much. Beginning in early 2012, they first spent two months pumping fuel from the ship's tanks. At the same time, they had to pump seawater in so that the balance wasn't affected and the ship didn't slide around. In early 2013, a platform was built under the ship to prevent it from falling further. Sponsons were then attached to the sides of the ship and cables attached to the underwater platform. The sponsons were then dragged underwater and opened up to allow the ocean to fill them. The ship could then roll over properly. Hmm. By late 2013, the ship was upright once more. The sponsons were then attached to the side of the ship to help keep it balanced. It now that is so wild, like the difference. And like, look at that. Safely. The sponsons were then attached to the side of the ship to help keep it. That is so wild. Like a year under the water versus a year above the water. And like, look at that difference. That's crazy. Hachi machi. That's nuts. It would be cool to explore a ship like that, though. Like, the, like, gutted, gutted parts. 
it balanced. It now rested partially above water and crews could walk around safely. By July 2014, the water was removed from the sponsons and compressed air was pumped in to lift the ship. And she was ready to cruise again. This time to a port in Genoa. It was a four-day towing Put journey to the, to the docks where a two-year process of dismantling and recycling would begin. That same weekend of the towing, Scatino was busy. He was the guest of honor at a white party on an island in the Bay of Naples. He appeared on the front page of a local newspaper, flanked by two of Italy's most eligible bachelorettes. Both of them need to know how to do their makeup. They both kind of look like they're clowns from the 70s. So hopefully this also got him in trouble. Anyway, so these are the things that I remember from the Costa Concordia. That sweet maiden of the sea. And as for you, little fella. Well, it's time to return you. From whence you came. Okay. Six quick things. One, NordVPN, good product, check them out. Number two, there's a new video on the second channel. You probably didn't see it because it was temporarily restricted. Now it's not. Enjoy. Three, if you've never seen the second channel before, give it a go. It's a different type of content, but we put a lot of production into it. It's not just offcuts. No, but it's also proof that he's an idiot sometimes, which I appreciate, so you should absolutely check it out. Four, there are a couple of secret channels as well, but I ain't telling you where they are. Five, no more 45 minute videos on the main channel. Back to 10 to 15 minutes and more of them. I'm good Six, with that. There's a Q&A coming out next week on incognito mode. That was a long it's got time a ago. ton of detail that we had to cut for the sake of brevity and will no doubt feature a ton of corrections oh, cool. as well. That's it. Thank you. Cool. Spicy. Spicy. Anyway. Fun, fun. Um, I did get a little bit furious there for a minute, which I wasn't expecting to. Uh, I wasn't expecting to get mad. Oh my God, I got so mad. Anyway, I have now watched The Cost of Concordia. Um, if you have other videos that you'd like me to watch because you want to watch me be mad about something, then like, let me know in the comments and, you know, maybe we'll watch it. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I will. Um, thanks for letting me know about that. I didn't know. I don't remember anything about it. Like, I've never heard of it before and, like, to the point where, obviously, I thought it was that one cruise line that just everyone... A diarrhea or whatever so thanks for letting me know about that particular disaster um probably something i should have known it's not like i was young in 2012. um appreciate you and i'm glad that he got what he deserved and he got prison and he can't get out of prison <laughs> oh i hope he's getting like beat up but anyway, he makes me very upset. And that kind of behavior is just incredibly upsetting. <laughs> so thank you very much. And uh, please like, comment, uh, subscribe, check out our other channels. Like we really appreciate you here. Um, and, you know, if you can, we'd re also really appreciate you becoming a Patreon. Um, if you are a Patreon, you can get some extra perks. You can get early videos. You can get unedited content. You can participate in polls. You can, like, for sure help decide what it is that we're going to react to. So you get a lot of little extra things. One of those things is at the end of a video, you get your name on our screen. So thank you again, and I will see you all in the next one.